we matching our problem space of the hours uh, to the software model like a strict way and pro and domain is about describing pro problem spaces it can be anything that you use to have like text application or, or whatever so yeah uh, and regularly to fix this problem you see one guy I will not mention the role and they say oh, we, 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 we slow we, 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 we produce bad code, we just need more developers or more qualified developers that will solve it. But the real problem is that reality is kind of tough to, to map it into the software. Uh, and you may observe that some connections are did not came to the software model at all, because for some reason they missed as a requirements or something else. So what is actually DDD? So while we're reading this, uh, <laughs> Text. <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's not a technology. It's kind of philosophy or software development approach. You know, like to to help developers uh, build more high quality software that matches the needs of the business. So, and uh, design that actually works. Sounds promising. Yes. So, yeah. And uh, who says uh, about the business more than uh, their owners? Or um, you you may heard. The business wants. Who, who, who's that guy? In domain driven design, they call uh, they call themselves like domain experts. It's not uh, like your CTO or VP of product. It may be like a developer if he have a nice qualification within this domain. In my experience, I uh, worked in a company where a guy, uh, developer was uh, hunted targetly uh, because he works previously in the fly industry. He knows the uh, you know glossary, you know the domain, how it works. So it, it, it's, it's just a role, it's not uh, someone like product owner only. Uh, and you may observe that uh, since the beginning when they look into the objects they can do not match their view, point of view to, to the problem. And more, moreover uh, there are guys in a different uh, probably country, city or behind the wall in the uh, New York department, they just doing software because they tend to they learn how to code but uh, did not learn how to care about the business why they are doing it. so uh, and after, after the things we um, sometimes we uh, can find that our complexity of our product or solution or service it doesn't matter about the scale um, going to high uh, well so <laughs> how we can deal with it so yeah, we can learn people to communicate. As we heard before, it's not such, such a, uh, a good plan just to smash pro, uh, business guys with the developers in one room. It's, it doesn't work that way. Uh, but we can also have some uh, strategic modeling. Uh, we can uh, uh, define what's, what, what is important for us and how we uh, will deal with it. So, oh, sorry. Yeah, and um, while strategic modeling is uh, very good for architectural software engineers, develop, uh, developers still need some practical guidance how to code these things within the domain. So that's why technical patterns also exist, we will dis discover them. And architectural decisions that made uh, to achieve some goals or um, cover some restrictions like GDPR, etc. So uh, we, we can reinvent something internal in our company that will help to deliver and reduce the complexity. And let's talk what domain driven design is not. It's not something about specific technology, probably you're disappointed right now, but um, it's really architectural neutral, you can choose whatever style you want, just, to follow, just you need to follow some other, other principles, you know. Yeah, so and domain driven design is not uh, always suitable for you. Uh, I will pro provide links to the book where it's a kind of um, benchmark when you're asking yourself what are you doing. Is, is it worth to jump into because it's also time efforts. So basic terminology starts with uh, two major things. It's a ubiquitous language, that meaning like it's universal across the company and you can apply it. Because, as you remember, our business guys did not talk the same language with uh, developers. And uh, bounded context. 
we, we will get about the context a little bit more, but for now it doesn't describe anything for us, so let's dive deeper. So, uh, for example, yeah, we, we can imagine that guys start to, to have a talk, but what language they are uh, having. So, uh, business stakeholders, like domain experts, they uh, actually need to um, understand that they do not implement any technology or force in any, anyone. They just to be there to provide business knowledge about uh, their domain to help developers do better modeling choices. Uh, otherwise, you probably heard this uh, definition like big ball of mud when the, as often used with the monolithic systems. Uh, they are actually a result of uh, such misbehave when developers did not listen to the business experts. I just want to use this tag, I just uh, copy paste this from the Stack Overflow and so on. So ubiquitous language is a language that um, used to speak between uh, this kind of guys and it should be used everyone, uh, by everyone within a whole project. It doesn't matter what your role or are you on a support role like with the customers or uh, you are a developer or designer, you named some things, we will get later, but you use it. So, yeah, it's kind of a strict rule and uh, I can comment the one uh, case where it doesn't behave uh, like this. When you have marketing team that changes naming or serving your feature under different names, it doesn't matter. You, it, it, that mapping is foreign for you. You need to maintain your language within uh, within the your team. And basically, ubiquitous language is something in the middle between these jargons uh, when uh, guys are agreed on something like terms. And uh, it, it should be used for communication, obviously, and also for identifying naming entities, values. Processes, context, and events that happen in your system. Also, naming in database tests of all types. And it's most strict things about domain dream design. You need to follow this language and change the model. But um, don't get disappointed too early. Uh, this changes when models are small and have clear uh, boundaries, they're easy, they are easy to modify it in the terms of business meaning and business logic, so it's not so hard. But marketing, yeah, they can, can have any naming for your features, like they do, just set, set, set in point. And yeah, it's kind of a joke, so you need to pay attention, you need to care about the naming uh, for your entities and so on, because it, it's really matter, because, uh, because any mapping in the heads, oh, this feature used to have this name and now it's so on, you, you can have like three different names for the user. It's a customer, user, recipient, actor, I don't know, and it's spread, spread uh, a lot um, across any boundaries. So, um, in basic terminology also we use in domain, as we already know, it's a problem space, subdomain bounded context. What's the difference between them? Let's back to the Emmanuel. Uh, as we know, job title doesn't matter, everyone fails. So, um, Someone came to him, probably someone from the sea level, and says, hey, the business, that business, want to make online pizzeria. And, okay, whatever reason they want to. So we start to communicate and find our, our um, use cases. So, for example, we found that we need to, uh, to allow customer to place the order, pay with the card, pizza can be delivered, pick at the store, cooks prepare the baked pizza, so on, so on, so on. So we assemble this and uh, driver follows the, the road. So, okay, we started to design some boundaries and think, okay, we need something that manage our orders, something that cooks pizza, obviously, some, some, something that delivers, and of course we want to make money. Uh, all three talks about the money. Uh, so we start to think, okay, we have an order to, to follow the things, and you know, like, uh, is it a good idea to, to have such uh, relations between the systems. Because uh, 
uh, what, what can be bad in that situation? We can get uh, something that DDD named like anemic model. Uh, when you have like just getters or setters uh, to the model about the attributes, it doesn't mean any business uh, uh, things like rename user change to mail or change user email. You just dot email sets this value, you know, and that model uh, um, provides like memory loss. You for you starting to to forget well, why you even have this model. What well, what, what responsibilities this model have. And it's also get more complex when you alternate logic inside this model um, with some ifs and, and so on. And uh, the sad thing about uh, the, most, the most frameworks that we are tend to use, they do not restrict you about these decisions. You're just going from it because it's handy, you're, provide, you're doing the new projects, and you just import the model and use whatever you want, you extend with any uh, new request, you extend this exact model. So let's have review, let's review this situation. Why, why it can be exist? Why do we need even different four models uh, for the order? So uh, what exactly order means within each of the context? For, for the order management, we care about pizza type, size, toppings, delivery address, total amount fee, everything that you're, you can see on the Chicago page. But for the kitchen, actually, to prepare these things, you, can, you just need a piece of type and topping. So you're just making this quick and good. Uh, and delivery, just need to have uh, address, deliver address. And you, he also probably need to have pizza type and size just to check if it's my order that I came to for it or not. And for payments, we care about money, just money and fees, if, if, if there are any. So domain model and ubiquitous language are scoped by bounded context. Uh, that means that uh, these are for different models. They have different requirements, they have different business logic uh, and methods and attributes and so on. So yeah, basically terminology, this is our whole uh, pizza domain, for example. Here are subdomains within these boundaries, and uh, yeah, how they different domains, subdomains. What, what is important here? Uh, so yeah, domains are class classified in DDD methodology. Uh, we have one type of that we name it like core domain. It's a strategic investment. It's a, a core for your company. It's a value uh, that distinguish your organization from the others. Uh, we have we can have uh, supporting domains. What they are? Uh, that domains without them, core domain cannot be uh, implemented at all, and we cannot be successful without. And it also cannot be uh, outsourced or shared because for, of internal data, uh, like like I uh, said about HTTP, I think and gateways. They need to implement these things to uh, to to help the core domain. So we can buy it from the shelf, and we can ge have generic subdomains that exist the solutions. We can buy on market or uh, subscriptions, and can, or we can outsource that without any problem to other company. So let's do some interactions here. Uh, how you can color these boxes? What, what, let's say what is core domain? Uh, any ideas? Kitchen, okay. Order management. What will happen if we can, I don't know, um, if we will make delivery a core domain? We will focus our development on the delivery. What we can result, uh, have results? We probably we can have an uh, order aggregation system, but it's a different kind of business, you know? It's, it doesn't work. Domain yeah. Delivery has not all the information inside. So yeah, and you know, like it's, it doesn't matter what information it has, because it's a if our product or startup focusing on the wrong uh, on the wrong core domain, we, uh, nice example like Amazon, yeah, they started uh, like a bookstore, but suddenly they are a cloud infrastructure. Uh, it's quite rarely that your product or startup became something like Amazon. It's one of the millions that it, it works because they done something better than other and they become like core domain for them and making money right now. So yeah, let's, let's see something 
in such way. So yeah, we probably can cho choose more than one core domain because, for example, order management in Kishin probably so important to make them closer to each other to have uh, low latency about the piece of preparing. But we can choose the priority. We can assign different amount of, uh, of uh, our developers, uh, people. Yeah, actually. And uh, delivery can be a uh, supportive domain because it's part partially need to, to be aware about the kitchen when it's done or not or, or everything else. But at the same time, uh, we can just make a dedicated service that uh, provides just integration with local delivery. We did not reinvent the delivery, we did not build the software for delivery. And payments just we took existing gateways or collection of gateways or just using Stripe, PayPal, something that already ready. ready. So, and those are, those are uh, bounded contexts. Uh, when we focused on uh, our uh, types of the domains. So in ideal situation, we want to have like one-on-one -on -one matching. We have one subdomain, one problem, we have uh, one solution. Easy, yes? For complex subdomains, it's kind of can be tough because we can have um, different uh, positioning on the markets, or we can have different markets uh, for our product, and we can uh, tune them with different, uh, you know, like uh, aggressively uh, attack this market by providing software that specifically uh, uh, narrowed to this market like guys in the floor doing something personal uh, for, for different uh, kind of uh, parameters of body health and stuff. And for typical, for legacy systems like monolithic system, we have every subdomain messing in one body contest, crossing any borders, any restrictions. So, yeah, actually, these all things were like a strategic uh, patterns. You can find them on a on a, uh, by this link, um, you you can see that there are many 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 uh, a lot of things uh, to map in the mind, but you also can uh, just in short to, to see how services can uh, what, what relations do they uh, can have uh, like uh, conformist when someone superior in the team have no interest to provide your team any features. It's actually awful. And tragic situation, but you need to to understand why it happens. And it's also uh, that domain dream design cars, but not in uh, this talk. Let's see what what's the technical part patterns. So the first one is the value object. What is this? So uh, value objects used for measures and descriptions. They do nothing uh, except showing the value. It's not like an identity. It doesn't have anything uh, that distinguish one value from another. For example, number 42 is the same number in any different other countries, for example, and, and like age of, of the human, it's just a value. So, uh, and we can compare these values objects only by the value, because if you add, for example, 32 plus 1, 33 is a new value, it's not the same. Uh, and they are immutable, they are not changes. Uh, for the same reason, so yeah, and uh, let's see what were the objects were in our cases. In our modeling example, user email can have name, domain, phone, number, net, uh, and network code. As you may see, you can you are free about to choose what they are. Is it just simple types, primitive types like strings, integers, so on, or is it like a class uh, compounds that have different fields attributes inside of it. So you can create your own value types by providing uh, your own classes and types. So deliver address, order amount, and so on. Uh, in the contrary, entities, they obviously have an identity. So you can uh, have a sibling or uh, you have full match in the name, middle name, last name, person, but you are different persons, obviously. You have something unique. It doesn't matter if you say hi and different different primes. It's hard to, to believe, but they're different. They're different. So um, you ca you can actually uh, yeah have 
complete match about the values from the two different objects, but they are different because they have different identifications. Um, and identity is stable unique, that means uh, that no, no identity is the same to another if they have different uh, identificators. Uh, life cycle is also important. For example, we doesn't care about uh, address like a label, if it's represent like a label. But we care if uh, address is a kind of attribute of the building, because building can change and address can be something else. And probably it's a better ex um, uh, example uh, to have, for example, phone. You have attribute phone. What does it matter? For you it probably can be just a number or a model name. Yeah. But for example, for uh, for uh, fact, for company that produces phone, the, it's a, an entity because they have different different identificators uh, that allows them to track this phone across different regions and so on and so on. But for you, it just can be a value like phone number. So phone may be different uh, in terms is it an um, entity or a value. And uh, they are usually mutable, you can modify entities. Like uh, if you took example like yourself, you evolve over the time, uh, obviously, you change. So uh, that's how it can be visual visualized. We have entity and values are <coughs> related to the entity. Uh, entity can be like uh, arranged in a different uh, relations as well. For example, uh, uh, you are a child of someone else, for example, you know, and he is not like a child class object, he's uh, like parent to you, he's like dad or mother to you. Uh, and, uh, sorry, yeah, and uh, th this kind of entities can be grouped in uh, things that uh, called like aggregate. Why, why, why aggregates is uh, even a thing in a DDD world? Because uh, we somehow need to understand where is the point uh, where our transactional changes are applied to these entities. For example, uh, if uh, you give a birth to a child, uh, your mother or uh, father became a, a grandmother, grandfather, and Zeus occurs in the same time. It, it, it cannot, cannot be had, um, a delay over time. <laughs> Since uh, the last week I became uh, yeah, father. So yeah, and this aggregate uh, provides our consistent boundary. So everything within this uh, aggregate should be changed in the transaction. Uh, and also we enforce any business invariance uh, between these models relations through the root one. That's actually a name, like root aggregate. So every change that came to this kind of objects came with a full qualified name with the identifiers of the parents and all related objects to change, for example, sub-entity. And, uh, yeah, the, the, the most important thing is uh, that transaction applies only within this boundary. Uh, any other aggregate uh, can change independently from from, the, from this one. And, uh, yeah, the, uh, what, what else we can say about the aggregates? So, yeah, the, they can be queried, fetched, like give me something in this hierarchical uh, relations, and can uh, be modified independently, as I say. And uh, how, to, how to get uh, um, the right boundaries for the aggregations, so how to define the things. You can uh, use the rule, delete rule of thumb. You can think about in, in the chain of the relations. Is it possible to remove uh, this uh, entity? Does it will make sense to the whole aggregate or not? So you can think this in this way. And also with each other, but they can provide uh, eventually consistency by publishing uh, domain events about their changes. Something happens and someone in other aggregate can react to these changes. So our entities from pizza shop domain are user, order, or the line item, pizza toppings, for example, delivery robes. There are many, many more, more but let's focus on that. 
Uh, for example, order can contain order line items, for example, like uh, toppings and so on, or uh, different other pieces. It's still one transaction. You pay for this order. You did not pay. You do not pay for uh, this uh, line items, and they deliver it to you independently. You pay for order. It's kind of transaction. You want to have this in single one. That's kind of aggregate. Delivery road can say contains orders with delivery address. It's a like kind of compound. Uh, with all sufficient information, it cannot be changed independently. Uh, and uh, all other entities are also aggregates, even if there is there only one entity. It's root entity, or root aggregate, sorry, and entities and aggregates <coughs> itself. So tactical patterns also can, you know, branch the law. Here uh, we covered something about this, but feel free to go and it's all clickable, you can, oh, no, it's not clickable, but it's reference to the site where you can find the glossary and read them more. So let, let, let's summarize what um, tactical DD patterns are. <coughs> you, you actually should model your uh, business with uh, these entities and you need to pay attention are they different? How you can raise these identifiers? It should be unique, stable, doesn't uh, copy over the time. Uh, usually, see UID force and uh, value objects. You, you, you need to figure out what attributes are values only. Also, you, you can have repositories. This is uh, also uh, kind of your class when you uh, implement your interface, how to retrieve and store the data. Uh, you, you create the records using the factories that can create an instance of the class by their descriptions and you, if you have a really uh, complex uh, solutions for the one class you can create mul uh, multiple classes for the, each entity split this up and name it like aggregate and work with transaction boundaries using it uh, and, uh, yeah, if, if you need to manipulate with different aggregates, you can have uh, some kind of service that uh, uses uh, commands to the different uh, uh, domains. It can be like within the single code base. You know, it, do it doesn't tend to be, uh, it doesn't say that you need to have a microservices. It's just a service, it's like class uh, with the commands that you integrate through. And eventually, the state of the whole business changes uh, in your system uh, made by providing uh, domain events to other aggregates through the any communication channel. It also doesn't say so you need have uh, Kafka or Kinesis or something else. So how DDD affects the software architecture? Meanwhile, when we say it doesn't affect, how it, how it, how it works, well, what's the title? <laughs> Yeah, uh, actually uh, you can use any architectures that you want, uh, uh, but uh, some of them plays ni play, play nice with, a, with, a, with DDD. So let's uh, set our goal about having what, what kind of architecture we want to have. We want uh, that uh, uh, this kind of architecture should protect our domain model from the real world dependencies, DB, UI network, and so on and so on. So we do not want to have any code inside our models that were saying like oh you, I need to go to this region and get this database connection and do these things so probably you get the idea uh, Eric Evans by the way is an author of this concept uh, that published a book in 2003 and he describes these layers like user interface application domain infrastructure Actually, nowadays we have different kinds of solutions that can be mapped to this, so you can choose any tool you want. Uh, it probably have different things, for example, from the right side it's a Django framework, and he uh, and that framework have different namings, but he actually can be, uh, if you do some constraints and arrangement using your team, you can fully comply these uh, principles of DDD. Uh, we also have a clean architecture by Uncle Bob. Uh, as you may see, we have also different namings for the same things. Something that external, like interfaces to us, but entities and use cases are in, internal inside these things. Uh, hexagonal architecture also plays with ports and adapters. You can read more on this. Onion architecture is the same, but here we have like the first name 
inside the domain model. That's actually most closest things to DDD. Uh, why is um, yeah actually why are they useful? Because uh, this architecture plays model as the center and doesn't depend on this infrastructure. What does it mean? It means that dependencies that, uh, like we used to, to code in the code, uh, code in the code. Yeah, uh, they go from the outside to the inside. So outer layers can depend on the inside layers, but not vice versa. So, 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 yeah, tough things are behind us. So we can relax and uh, think about how even stri strange patterns can help the businesses. So the first of all. Business can have a clear understanding uh, what they are doing. They are focused on some domain. They know they don't uh, want to spend money on something that they will not benefit because they have chosen different uh, targets and goals. Um, so yeah, organization gains a, a useful model, and um, it's nice to see how business people. Um, Came happy because they came with the idea, they interact with the other guys, and they became uh, and they have a, a value from it, and they happy. They, now the things are working, and uh, refining precise definition of understanding the business is developed because if developer understands why uh, he developing something uh, on their daily duties, they can. Um, grow their empathy to the users that suffer, obviously, uh, if things went wrong and designed poorly from the book. And uh, yeah, it's a nice thing to understand that you contribute to the business and success of the company. And also, uh, it allows to move agile. Like it's, uh, it's not a trend, it's a standard right now. And you can uh, do the modeling continuously. You, you do not need to have such breaks, let's stop and refactor this because it's also hard to sell to the to the guys who manage you and uh, you, you, you rather want to go and modify small models uh, continuously renaming them accordingly to the changes and just keep it going fake it until you make it, yeah and a better user experience is gained uh, sometimes uh, discussing uh, the details of the implementation of the model you can find some invariants uh, that were missed by uh, actual users because nobody expected to, uh, some cases like side effects that can be actually useful and you can uh, improve ex user experience as well because he, he did not, uh, um, user can go to your site, website or your solution, whatever your software is and fi find their dif different strange namings like it's uh, tags. I, I don't know. I don't understand what is tags. If, for example, my grand grand mother cannot understand what tags is. Uh, labels probably. So it's better. It's tough to, to be correct in the naming, but user can can feel it. And enterprise architecture is a bit better organized. You can. Uh, it, it not only. Uh, about the software itself, how it's compound, how it's structured inside, inside your code base. It's more about how you can scale, like uh, organization, in a matter of how you can distribute uh, the time efforts of your team, uh, how you can uh, allow them work independently without causing the problems. Yeah, and uh, the final thing is about how, to, how we can learn DDD. Effectively, so the first thing is uh, this. It's named like actually in the community like Green Book uh, about the main dream design. These still things. It's Green Book for anyone who just want to get some basics about the main dream design, like uh, product owners, sales guys. They did not want to have deeper understanding about technical patterns and technical stuff. They want just to have some language with you, establish some language with you uh, about the domain driven design on strategic level. Uh, the red one book is about implementing, uh, it, it's uh, worth to read the book. Uh, and that book, like if you are want to get philosophy degree 
at the same level as Eric Evans does. And the problem was that book uh, that he started to describe DDD from technical patterns that prefer preferably interested by developers, not by the business persons. And it's really hard to understand with this inversion. Uh, this book done it right, starting with the uh, strategic patterns. So, and practice, you need to practice. Uh, you, you need at least start to think in a, inside your head or use your white papers, whiteboards. Um, just draw the boundaries, figure out is it actually one model or, or multiple models, uh, what they be, how they behave, and so on. Try to think about and try to apply this within uh, your team. Just have some Friday afternoon uh, with uh, half hour talk about uh, how we can redesign our monolith, for example, to cover the needs. Yeah, and also two useful um, articles. The first one is just five minute tour. Yeah, you waste time here. You, you could read this uh, book uh, by this article and um, the make driven design example by Mark Sertik. Um, it's worth to read because it's not a simple use case like for domain uh, that I chosen like pizza domain. Uh, but you know, going deeper in every domain, you will get more and more insights about this. So uh, and. Uh, it will be fascinating how, how every domain is hard. Is there no things like easy domain at all in the nature? And uh, yeah, the author of the thread book have uh, a video course for how long, I believe, in O'Reilly Learning Center. Uh, this talk specifically good for guys who know the patterns. They are kind of mapping of the uh, every pattern into the Python, how, how we can achieve it using Python, for example. And this talk is about how to draw uh, this uh, bounded context right, because it's, it's actually hard to figure out where the systems should be independent and when uh, you need extract a third system from the other two, for example. Yeah, that's basically all. You can find the slides. And you can disagree with me and say that I'm doing wrong and say how to do it right during the, using this LinkedIn direct messages. So thank you for attention. Thank you. Actually, you know, uh, we experienced this, this, such situation when we analyzed our one of the monolithic systems. Uh, the first intention is actually to create for every existed model, create a new aggregate and uh, think that it's okay. But yeah, uh, you can you can experience that. But if you uh, have more time to read this red book, uh, it provides some. Uh, no, no things. Uh, what to do about the aggregates? And one of them, uh, if you trying to use some kind of distributed transaction across these aggregates, you want to have them in a sync. At some time, it's none of things. You 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 should better uh, rearrange the entities inside your aggregates, or probably extract a new uh, like <laughs> a new aggregate, but in a different system. Uh, that will uh, behave uh, like you want. So probably applying kind of saga pattern with aggregates. With yeah, the and uh, actually we tried. Yeah, yeah, we tried to avoid sagas as much as possible, and we had such experience. But it 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 it, in, in, um, it required to change any other system uh, to listen domain events and react to them accordingly. And if system was initially synchronous, 
uh, it's kind of, it's, it's time effort, but you, you can plan it, you can design it, and the idea behind the DDD that you actually uh, implementing uh, like you designed, and th this is like an approach to design. Yeah. Hi, uh, yeah. thanks for the uh, presentation. It was uh, useful, at least for me. Okay. And my question is, okay. if I am a beginner and I would like to start uh, uh, learning DDD, is it better to start with TDD or I can directly mm -hmm. uh, jump into DDD? And uh, you know, uh, <laughs> DDD and other DDDs are um, friendly too. <laughs> To this DDD, not because they have simulators, uh, because DDD doesn't uh, request that from from you. If you are, uh, you know, okay and good, or you're you you are by nature uh, seeing models in the right way, you can model it. Uh, you can go without uh, TDD if you really sure that your code is right and so okay. But uh, TDD just helps to code uh, your models. It doesn't help to design, uh, actually. So you need to design and then to code. Thank you. Yeah. Hello, uh, thanks for the presentation. Uh, really interesting, and just one question, uh, do you use uh, DDD in org security in your project currently? And yes, no, and why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, <laughs> uh, the answer is in between, uh, yeah, because org security um, um, like a product in a such rapidly growing market, and there are a lot of things to do, and there everyone in the hurry, uh, we started to apply DDD within our uh, team and uh, we got some results to share internally, but it's like in the beginning of, uh, of the process. So it's, yeah, it's a long road to apply it across the company because everyone needs to learn and it's kind of transaction to the whole company for, for many people hundreds of people, it's hard to achieve. You can start from your team and, for example, manager and product owner who firing up your tasks to, to do. You can sit with them, you have, can have conversation and, for example, for new features, you can apply DDD to the design. That's the kind of approach that we are running on our security right now. One more, okay. Yes, a good question from my side. Uh, so, I think somewhere in the beginning you mentioned about cases where when to not use the DDD. Yeah. Sorry for maybe maybe I missed something or sorry for uh, keeping you accountable for that. But, uh, yeah, it's okay. but uh, could you elaborate more on the uh, yeah. uh, situations where not to use DDD? Yeah, basically, DDD is not useful when you're the main. Uh, when your problem lays with or the main is about just having some key wheel storages and you just store the data uh, like data mm, mm, lakes for example if you are about it you probably you know like you can design everything about the web interfaces uh, UIs users it's, it will it will be still uh, a domain but the core, your core is just set values and, and you do play and read writes and such cases are not good. But you know like probably it's also not a, a good option to start with a DDD when you have like a small small prototype uh, and you have no fundings at all and it will, it, it will help you just to think what you need to implement, what domain, how you need to, to find, what's the core. But that's all. It's basically no, no effort about. Uh, there's no need to implement onion architecture in such projects and so on. Yeah. 